Bad news about QAnon. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. QAnon is now as popular in the U.S. as some major religions, polls suggest. 15% of Americans believe that patriots may have to resort to violence to restore the country's rightful order, the poll has indicated. As hopes fade for a bipartisan inquiry into the Capitol riot on January 6th, the, inqui the, the bipartisan inquiry failed, by the way, thanks to a filibuster by the Republicans. Just so you know, this article was written before that happened. So there will be no investigation into the 6th. Wow. There will not be an investigation into an official Senate investigation, that is. Of course, there's still FBI stuff. But there will not be an official Senate investigation into the literal invasion of the Senate chambers. Wow. Yikes. It's increasingly clear that the Republican base remains in thrall to the web of untruths spun by Donald J. Trump and perhaps even more outlandish lies beyond those of the former president's making. A federal judge warned in an opinion yesterday that Mr. Trump's insistence on the big lie that the November election was stolen from him is still posed as a serious threat. Presiding over the case of a man accused of storming Congress on the 6th, J Judge Amy... Berman Jackson of the United States District Court of Washington wrote, The steady drumbeat that inspired the defendant to take up arms has not faded away. Six months later, the canard that the election was stolen is being repeated daily on major news outlets and from the corridors of power in state and federal governments, not to mention in the near daily fulminations of the former president. But it's not just the notion that the election was stolen that has caught on with the former president's supporters. QAnon, an outlandish and ever-evolving conspiracy theory spread by some of Mr. Trump's most ardent followers, has significant traction with a segment of the public, particularly Republicans and Americans who consume news from far-right sources. Those are the findings of a poll released today by the Public Religion Research Inst Institute and the Interfaith Youth Corps, which found that 15% of Americans say they think that the levers of power are controlled by a cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles, a core belief of QAnon supporters. The same share said that it was true that American patriots may have to resort to violence to depose the pedophiles and restore the country's rightful order. Now, do you motherfuckers see why I have a problem with uh, carelessly labeling people f pedophiles? Do you all understand? Do you understand why I was so angry and frustrated and triggered over the last like week or so? Does it make sense now? Yeah. Um... Wow. A full 20% of respondents said that they thought a biblical scale storm would soon sweep away all of these evil elites and restore the rightful leaders of the country. No, it won't, Lady Kelgana. No, it will not. You want to know why it won't be, Lady Kelgana? You want to know why? Don't die. There we go. Now, um, we're not allowed to die. Correct. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot to talk about with this. I have spent a lot of time talking about indoctrination. I have spent a lot of time on this channel talking about conspiracy theory. Um, I've spent a lot of time talking in this channel about increasingly extreme rhetoric. And there's something else we have to talk about, which I have talked about before, of course, and we will talk about it again inevitably. But that is the fact that an increasing percentage of our country does not believe in the same reality that the rest of us do. And I mean that very literally. 
they literally do not believe in the same basic facts about the world that the rest of us do. And that is not a good thing. That is really not a good thing. Okay? That is um, not a minor schism. That is not a schism that you can easily solve. When half of the country, or not half, I'm so sorry, when 20% of the country, and of course, this is only one poll, and it's limited, and there's faults in these sort of polls, but when you poll a, a, a group of randomly selected people, and 20, or, or I should say, scientifically selected people, because this is an official polling group, they definitely do their due diligence, but when you poll a group, and 20% of those come back telling you, that they believe that the country is currently being ruled by false leaders, that democracy has failed, and that they are essentially imprisoned in their own country, that is very bad. That is very, very bad. This is not a slight ideological difference. This is not a, again, this is not like, we disagree on gay marriage, which is bad enough. This is not, we disagree on trans people. This is, we disagree on every single aspect of governance and society, and the current government is not legitimate. That is super bad, everybody. That is, wow, wow, that is really not good. Um, and... 15% of people believing that there is a cabal of evil pedophiles running the country and like sucking the souls out of children. That is not good at all. How the hell did QAnon even happen? Who the hell did this anyway? A lot of people did this. It is really, really complicated, okay? QAnon has spread among increasingly impoverished, or I shouldn't say increasingly impoverished. I should say, um, okay, let me restart this. The material conditions in America have been getting worse and worse and worse, okay? Not to play devil's advocate, but we've said that the Bush and Trump administrations were illegitimate. I've never said that they were illegitimate. I've said that there were massive flaws, that there were things that were taken that were unfair. But I've never said that they were illegitimate. That's a huge claim. And these are huge claims. Maybe some people have. But even not in the same way. And there were there are some sort of basis to it. This is nothing. There is no basis to QAnon. QAnon is made up. Have you seen QAnon posts? They're gibberish. I'm not kidding you. They are gibberish. It is raw it is raw conspiracy theory yes i know tech debt i'll explain that in a second the material conditions in america have been getting worse and worse and worse for the last decade plus people are making less they're working more they're getting less for their money it's not good there's been housing crises. People can't get housing. People are evicted. Homelessness is on the rise. These are very big issues. And unfortunately, a lot of people fall through the cracks. And there are a lot of people ready to manipulate those who have fallen through the cracks. And unfortunately... When interests align in such a way that you have a president who is backed almost, almost exclusively by the biggest news channel in the country to the degree where they will cover for him no matter what he does. And that president propagates and plays coy with a conspiracy that alleges that even though he's president, there is actually a secret cabal operating behind the scenes that he's fighting against. You end up with a lot of lonely, deluded, uh, socially atomized people. And then a pandemic hits 
and makes it even worse because people can't see each other without getting sick and people are dying and a lot of people are in the hospital and the medical system is overwhelmed so people can't get the mental health care that they need and what this does is this is buckling buckling our system I would argue that our system has already buckled and I don't know this is su such a big issue that I don't even know how you tackle it it is very difficult We've talked a lot about a lot of heavy things today, but this one is really unsettling because this gives us an idea of just how many people in this country are actually convinced that democracy is already gone, like completely gone, and they want a strong man to come fix it for them because they think that everything's done for, so they don't got to worry about the rules anymore. Do you, are you starting to get the picture that I'm painting for you? Start st starting to sound a little familiar, isn't it? You remember another time in history when people felt that a secret cabal had fucked their country and their increasingly reduced material conditions led to them scapegoating that supposedly elite group of secret people to the degree that they were willing to l line up behind a strong man who promised to fix everything. I don't think that this is a stretch. I don't think that this is exaggeration. Oh, there's tons of ways to push back. It's just going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult. Not Godwin's law? Dude, do you think... Wait, hold on a second. Do you think it's Godwin's law? Do you think it's Godwin's law when you talk about, like, World War II history? Do you think it's Godwin's law when you point out that, like, there are direct comparisons? Are you serious? Okay. Thank God. I want to be wrong about this, but I'm not. I've been talking about this. I've been making these calls. I've been pointing this shit out since I started my career here. Okay? Some of you who've been in my chat will remember when I had this almost exact conversation on panels a year ago, a year and a half ago, talking about exactly this. And it's unfortunate, but it's something we're going to have to think about. And what that means is that we need to mentally prepare ourselves to think outside the box. Okay? Because our society is changing. Our society already has changed. We don't know it yet because nobody's come out from quarantine. People are still living online. People are still working themselves to death. And they haven't come to realize that holy shit we live in a completely different world than we did a year ago we live in a totally different world than we did a year ago ashmar says i'm jewish and can confirm that q is basically the medieval blood libel it, yes it is it is q anon is the blood libel yet it, it, it literally is so was the so was the satanic panic yes Yep, we've talked about that on this channel. We, we've talked about the blood libel. The blood libel was the idea that Jewish people were kidnapping uh, Christian children um, to, uh, to, to, to kill them and use them in their Kabbalistic uh, um, rituals. But we live in a different world now. And what we, are, what we need to realize... Is that it's if we don't want the world to go to shit, we all have to start building.
We have to take care of each other. We have to start taking care of ourselves. We have to start taking care of each other. There is no more room for apathy, okay? There's no more room for apathy. You might not be able to do much, but you can do something. And if everybody does whatever they can, remember Jojo Rabbit? They did what they could. That's what stops it. You do what you can. But you have to fight the desire to just give up and lay down and die. No room for apathy anymore. Apathy will lead you to a miserable existence. We have to, we have to confront these issues. Getting minorities out of high-risk areas? I agree. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, Lady Kilgana. There might you might have to approach a different a different approach. No more apathy. Some of us are some of this might take this might mean taking a few risks here and there, so doing things that you wouldn't otherwise do, like I don't know, going out to an event or being willing to share, uh, 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 what you have with somebody who needs what you already have. Like not something that you need to survive with, but if you have an abundance, share that abundance if you can. Because there are a lot of people in need right now. A lot of people in need. I don't know if you know this, but our country has been scourged by, by COVID. There are a lot of people who are lonely, who are hurting, who are isolated. And we need to, we need to overcome that. And sometimes that will take us being a little brave, having to do a lot of thinking, maybe taking a few risks here and there. But that's very important, okay? Very important. I agree with you, Aztec. Fear is there to motivate us so we don't die. You gotta channel that to do what you can do. Fear can be used to paralyze you or it can be used to motivate you. And I will tell you, fear is a whole lot easier to deal with if you allow it to be a motivator as opposed to uh, a generator of apathy. And you will find that you can put your mind to better things. We're stuck with people who constantly hate on our existence right now. So yeah, scourge sounds about right. No jobs, all pain. It's not all pain. It's not all pain. There's lots of beautiful things in the world. There are lots of great things still in the world, but there is a lot of pain. There is a lot of pain and there's a lot of joblessness, but guess what? joblessness doesn't necessarily mean a lack of resources or a lack of needs there are things that need doing there are there are there is labor that needs doing and you can do that you can contribute to that there are projects that need organizing there are ideas that need inventing and i'm addressing a large group of people a lot of my viewers i'm addressing a huge group of people right now all of you have unique skills and unique life circumstances that is up to you to analyze and think about. What I'm asking you to do is to kick off your apathy, even if it's hard, even if it requires you doing things like seeking out counsel or whatever. Kick off the apathy. Your job is to make music for people, Gayfesh, and you do a damn good job at it. You do a damn good job at it. And there are lots of different people who have all kinds of different skills, and we can work together to make amazing things, things that can change the world. And we know we can change the world, right? We just watched our friend Vosh raise $300,000 to help sick kids. I mean, he's, he's going to save lives. That's going to save lives. And that was a crazy complex effort that was actually super fun. As it turns out, doing things can also be very fun. Kicking off apathy is super hard, especially when you have no real skill, skills at anything. You can learn skills. And I guess you already, I'm going to guess you already have skills. You might just not know how to apply them yet. Which means that you need to just work at figuring out how to apply your skills. Me? I'm a communicator. I'm an organizer. I'm a producer. 
That's what I'm doing. I'm building a community. I'm building a TV show that will hopefully make the world a better place, bring some laughter into the world, and teach people some interesting facts and be a little motivational. That's what I like to do. I'm very good at that. But that's not me. Everybody, everybody's not me. Everybody has their own set of skills. And I ask you to try and find a way to put them to good use. Think about that actively. Okay? There are good times. I've had really good times, okay? Amid the hardships, you will find good times. Think of it like an anime. Think of it like an anime. You might be in dark times, but you have friends and you have the will to fight. You could do a training montage IRL. Damn. Anime in real life. Life is not about suffering. You live on in spite of suffering. 